Once upon a time, journalist and writer Griffin Shea embarked on his dream of opening a bookstore in downtown Johannesburg. Then came the plot twist. A deadly virus became a global pandemic. Millions fell ill across the world. Hundreds of thousands died. South Africa announced a total 35-day lockdown to try to stop the spread. All non-essential businesses had to close, Shea's included. Johannesburg, the mining town founded because of its massive underground gold seam, likes to tell a story about itself. This, we say, is a town of people on the move, with no time to stop and take in something as indulgent as a book. That story, Shea says, is just not true. We have 12 booksellers in, within one block of the store. So when people came to me like, oh, why are you open a bookstore in the CBD? Like, no one reads down there. And it's like, well, the real challenge is, how am I going to compete with all these other booksellers? Like, how are we going to differentiate ourselves? International studies confirm that Johannesburg is a book town. There's this World Cities Cultural Report. Basically, it's looking at, like, how many cinemas do you have? How many movie theaters? How many libraries? How many bookstores? And the last time Joburg participated, we actually had more bookstores than almost any other city surveyed. So we had more than Berlin, more than Sydney, more than New York. We had just a few fewer than Paris. But we don't tell ourselves that story. Now, as South Africa begins to slowly ease the lockdown, the government says books of educational value are allowed for sale. Most booksellers, Shea included, are taking a very liberal view of that, arguing all books have educational value. Writer and activist Eleanor Sisulu agrees and says there's a wealth of original, valuable literature here. Emotionally, books are important psychologically, educationally, culturally as well, you know, for, for the community, African language speaking community, uh, there's been a big move, especially by younger people, to, to read in their own languages. Shea says he's had no problems from the police since he relaunched internet sales this week. Actually, he says a few officers have stopped by, checked on his hygiene precautions, and then bought books. South Africa's publishing industry is the most developed on the continent. But even so, many of its releases don't leave African shores. Shea says that's a shame. On a bright August So we morning, asked him to get in on the pandemic trend of reading aloud. This is a selection from his new children's book, The First Story Ever Told. Enjoy. So when the world was new, in the first village there ever was, lived a mother, a father, and ten children. The mother worked during the day, and father carved animals for the children to play with. They were very happy. Until one night, the children couldn't sleep. We want a story. Mother we'll leave you there, safe in the magical world of books, wherever you may actually be. Anita Powell, VOA News, Johannesburg. So they cried all night, and the next, and the next. <gasps> Until